Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, this is Mobile 12. I know it's been a while, so don't get mad at me, but the reason why, so let me give you guys a little quick reason why I couldn't upload any videos. My laptop, my laptop is junk, okay? So I haven't been able to upload any videos because every time I try to do it, it would crash. So cut me some slack in regards to that. Uh, currently, I'm still using that whack laptop, um, but I'm making it work as best as I can. So don't expect me to constantly pump out videos every day or you know twice every day like I used to, uh, because again my laptop is not le legit. Okay, so again, cut me some slack. I'm back and I'll be making some more videos. Hopefully, in this next span of a few months, I'll be uploading uh, very occasionally, like you know once every week, something like that. We'll see. Maybe I'll get. I'll get a lot of energy one day and upload like two, three videos. But again, no promises because again, my laptop is pretty junky. Now, for this video, I'll be specifically talking about the Wittig reaction. Okay, we're going to be continuing our discussion about uh, organic chemistry. So it's the Wittig. With uh, let me see how to spell it. Wittig reaction. Okay, so Wittig reaction, and uh, basically, it's you have an aldehyde or ketone you react it with a the Wittig reagent that's what I like to call it, the Wittig reagent and you get an alkene and that's the basic setup or basic way that this is the basic product and basic reaction you get the aldehyde or ketone reacted with a Wittig reagent you get an alkene Okay, always get an alkene. Well, let me find another marker because this one is not working. Hold on, let's see. Okay, that's better. Okay, so that's the basic setup. So again, aldehyde or ketone, Wittig reagent, alkene. Now, what is the Wittig reagent? Okay, Wittig reagent it takes the basic form of PH3P, double bonded to some type of carbon group. So um, I put an R to represent a carbon group. Okay. So PH3P, what is that? That's a phosphorus bonded to three phenyl groups. So like an aromatic ring. Okay. That's the phenyl groups that we're talking about. The R is your carbon group, some type of carbon group. Okay. So that is your Wittig reagent. Okay. Now the basic, the most basic. From my understanding, the most basic Wittig reagent you'll have is PH3P, and that's a double bond right there, CH2. That's the most basic Wittig reagent you'll have. Okay. So let's see how we would go about this. And again, I love to make my videos basic, simplistic. And what I mean by that is I just want you to be able to identify how to start, uh, how to go from starting material to product. I don't want to go into these long discussions about. Um, the nitty gritty details of how everything bonds together but I just want to show you the quick and easy way of getting from aldehyde ketone to alkene so let's look at an example using the most basic reagent again let's start off with a simple um, okay with a simple ketone such as that right and here is your pH 3P CH2 that's the most basic right now like I said and sorry about the blurriness it should clear up like I said aldehyde or ketone here's our ketone in this case reacts with your Wittig reagent right pH 3P CH2 that's the most basic reagent form you get an alkene now the way you want to think about it is identify your star carbon that's the carbon of your carbonyl okay there's your star carbon right there. Okay, this damn thing stops blurring up. Okay, so there you go. There is your star carbon. And what you'll do is you're going to replace this double bonded oxygen with this piece here, which is double bonded carbon group. Okay, replace this piece here which are double bonded carbon group and I'll go over the reaction mechanism very briefly after I go over some examples so what your product will look like again the, I, you know label your star carbon and at the end you want to erase it 
There's your double bonded CH. Here's your double bonded CH2 group. Very simple, okay? Very simple. No need to make it any more difficult than it should be. So again, replace your double bonded O with your double bonded R group. Another example. Let's just say we have this thing right here. This uh, cyclohexanone, that's what they would call it. Reacting with another Wittig reagent. Let's make it a little bit more complex. Okay. So again, I'm just drawing the skeletal structure in this area. So, identify your star carbon right there. What we'll do is replace the double bonded O with this thing here. And what we'll get is the following. Again, replace the double bonded O with this piece here. One, two, three. There you go. There's your answer. Very simple. The Wittig reaction, I think, is one of my favorite. Actually, no, I said the Wolf Kishner is my favorite reaction. Um, but this is another one of my favorite reactions because it's so simple. So that's how you do it. So let's go over the reaction mechanism briefly. Um, and then I think I'll do another one or two examples and then I'll leave you guys with that. Okay, the reaction mechanism. We'll go back to our first example where we had our ketone. Okay, we had this guy going on. I'll put this up top right here. And we had this. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then the product we got was this. Okay. Hold on a second. You guys can see that. Right? You have the um, alkene right there up top. Again, sorry about the blurriness. So the, the uh, reaction mechanism looks something like this, okay? So again, here is your PH3P double bonded CH2. And your nucleophilic site is a double bond right there. The pi, the pi electrons there. Your electrophilic site, the site that wants the nucleophilic area to attack it, is this part right here, the carbon of the carbonyl. That's your electrophilic site. So again, the nucleophile comes and attacks the electrophilic site. So it starts off as such. Okay? The pi electrons attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, and you shift the pi electrons from the carbonyl to the oxygen. So what you end up with is this intermediate. So an oxygen with a negative charge, okay, your carbon with the two H's, right, and I'll put CH2 there, and you have your P, PH3, and your P, the phosphorus, now bears a positive charge, okay? You could do a formal charge calculation, and it will come out to be a positive, okay? Now, what happens, and let me just draw the uh, lone pairs here, okay? Now what happens is you have one of these lone pairs attacks the phosphorus of the PPH3, and you get a, a cyclic intermediate. Okay. I don't want to go off the screen, so you can see H two, you have your P, P, H, three, right? And you have your oxygen bonded to the phosphorus. Okay, again, this bond between the carbon is with the carbon and phosphorus, not with the, P, uh, the carbon and pH three. That's your phenyl groups that are hanging off of the phosphorus. Now, the final step of the reaction mechanism, which is very simple, is this bond between the carbon and phosphorus comes back down right here to form your carbon uh, your carbon uh, your carbon carbon double bond which is your alkene and this bond right here between the oxygen and carbon goes back up to form a phosphorus oxygen double bond so your final product will be your alkene product which is your 
which looks like this, plus you get your inner uh, your side product, which would be um, this. I don't know what, what you would call this, but you have that, which is the oxygen, phosphorus, double bond, and pH three, and that's it. And let's label the star carbon so you know where everything is at. And there you have it. Okay, and that's the Wittig, uh, that's the Wittig reaction or Wittig reaction, however way you want to pronounce it. It's pretty simple, very straightforward. That's the reaction mechanism. It's a one, two, let's see, three-step mechanism, um, but it's very simple. And again, remember, it's aldehyde or ketone. It's those carbonyl functional groups, aldehyde or ketone plus Wittig reaction, Wittig reagent will give you your alkene product. That's all you need to know. And do the simplistic way I showed you, where it will be this piece here that replaces this guy right there that double bonded oxygen okay well thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for some more videos hopefully coming in the near future